So what we've done, we've cleaved down a piece of wood and quartered it. So we have a chunky piece of wood like this and clearly that wouldn't be very suitable for putting up onto the pole lathe. So we've gone onto the shave horse and uh, gradually moved the piece of wood into the round using the shave horse and the draw knife. This is now going to be more easy to use on the pole lathe. The term bodger we believe came from the fact that uh, the guys up in High Wick and Buckinghamshire who made the chair legs for the Windsor chair industry and that was all they did, just the chair legs and did not half the job. So we believe the term bodger came about because of only doing half the job. But these bodgers used to make the legs up in the winter, up in the High Wycombe area, Buckinghamshire. And the reason they use that area is because of the beech trees. Now beech wood splits so lovely, so straight, and it meant they wouldn't have to waste so much wood. And uh, so that's how the term bodger came about, we believe. So just to finish off, a couple of cuts on here. And we've got a piece of wood that's nicely round and importantly straight. So I'm just going to uh, set this up on the lathe now. What we're going to do is to need to centre the piece of wood so it goes between the two poppets on the lathe. A little gravel there just to the hole. And again this end right in the middle you can see, no gauges required. We've put some vegetable oil on here which enables it to turn more easily and stops the wood burning when it's on the lathe. A little bit of vegetable oil. Now I'm going to set it up onto the lathe. Grab the cord, take it around a couple of times and set it between the two poppets here. The piece of wood I have in here is ash. We get a lot of ash in this part of the world. As a group we cut for the National Trust during the winter months, helping them uh, maintain the woodlands. And the consequence is that we do get quite a, a large amount of wood to use during the summer. Uh, sometimes we get some oak, which is rather nice. I can make some oak chairs, oak, spin uh, oak spindles from that. Different things I make, anything in the round basically. Not only the, the standards of chair legs and spindles, but rolling pins, garden dibbers, spurtles, spurtles for stirring a porridge, toying rattles, fishermen's priests, just about anything really. Now the piece of wood is in the pole lathe, just uh, quickly showing how the pole lathe works. The cords around the piece of wood so acts as a friction device. As I push the treadle down, the wood then turns toward me. The pole, situated here, acts as a spring, takes the wood back to the starting point again. And it's just that gen regular action. So what we have is a reciprocating lathe. It's not going in one direction all the time. So the chiseling action has to be fairly precise. We've got the roughing gouge here. We're going to continue the rounding process with a piece of wood. See the wood's coming off. working our way along and we got the high points even with the rounding process there there's still high points on the wood Okay, we've got the shape that we need. What I need to do now is to use the smoothing chisel to smooth it off and continue the shaping process. Now we have the dibber all shaped up, we need to put some lines on it to define the inches, the markings for depth of uh, when we're planting plants etc. And for that I'm going to use a skew chisel, a little pointy bit there, to put the marks on the wood. Okay. Part, putting some marks in the wood. Okay. 
Okay, we've got the marks on the wood now. I'm going to use a, a sort of a cheese cutter device, wrapped around the wood with a bit of friction, just blackens up the markings so that it can be seen and they stay there for quite some time. And the spunk rising there indicates we've got a nice black line on the piece of wood. Okay, back to the smoothing chisel, just to have a clean up, a few bits of uh, high wood there, so we just take that down, and that finishes the article ready just to trim up. I was doing some shows up at Kew Gardens a couple of years ago and someone suggested it's also an old English word, that's bodger, an old English word for badger. And the badger is known as the old man of the wood. So that's a nice little connection there. <laughs> 